Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing a few rumours that have been floating around for NVIDIA's Lovelace. And then I'm going to discuss some things that I've personally been hearing, so some exclusive information. So this comes to us via Ulysses on Twitter. Now, they have been an account which has existed for a while, but as always with this stuff, I'd like for you to take some well let's say a few grains of salt with this information but according to them anyway lovelace is going to be a very interesting architecture because the performance leap is going to be very similar from what we saw with maxwell to pascal so if you recall like with nvidia slides back in the day they basically were stating that well yeah maxwell to pascal so for example a 980 to a 1080 or even the 980 ti to the 1080 ti though the ti's didn't launch at the well launch of pascal that was really clumsily worded but whatever and yeah they were really kind of pushing that it's twice as fast now obviously there were a lot of reasons that this was the case pascal was an entirely new architecture nvidia just cranked up the clock speeds to like 1 billion and they also were utilizing new um, memory types and there was just tons of other changes across the architecture and i think it's fair that while rtx 20 was a very important architecture from uh, nvidia simply for making things like ray tracing you know kind of normal on desktop although obviously software support took a long time in terms of actually the performance leap from let's say a 2080 ti compared to a 1080 ti it wasn't anywhere close to what we saw previously from maxwell to pascal well according anyway to ulysses this is going to be the case and they've also stated that the clock frequency is going to be much higher it's going to be somewhere around 2.4 gigahertz for boost now this actually brings me to the main purpose of the video and that's kind of what I've been hearing. So there have been a lot of you know debates recently as to the power consumption of these next gen GPUs with Lovelace in particular being an area of concern and some even saying that Narve 31 could be north of 400 watts. Now, that's a lot of juice, to be honest with you. And a couple of sources have reached out to me and told me that this is probably almost certainly not the case for Narve 31. I was told that it's actually 350 watts. Although, I'm getting conflicting information concerning the clock frequency. One person has told me that the clock frequency is probably a little bit higher, whereas the other one has told me that it's remaining pretty stagnant. So, honestly, I'm not sure what way to kind of sway in that direction at the moment. But yeah, apparently AMD's... Um, power consumption is not going to be as bad as Lovelace, but Lovelace is going to be a hungry, hungry hippo. In fact, it could be almost certainly over 400 watts. I've now got two other people telling me this, along with all of the other rumors that we've been hearing. But yeah, really it comes down to the performance targets. And there's a lot of interesting discussion, of course, because if you think about it, what Ulysses just mentioned, you know, it's a similar leap from, again, Maxwell to Pascal, that was, again, a two-point times uh, performance increase. And that's kind of similar to what I'm hearing. I've heard now from several sources who has told me it's 2.2, and I've put that video out there several times. Although one is telling me it could be a little bit higher, up to 2.4. The problem is, I still don't think it's going to be better than Narve 31, which I'm hearing is almost certainly going to be 2.5 or greater. The problem is when talking about performance targets, well, honestly, without actually 100% information as what those targets are, it's very difficult. Like, what are we referring to here? Are we referring to T-flops? Are we talking ray tracing performance? Are we talking geometry performance? Are we talking frame rate goes brr? Are we referring to a specific one little thing of the GPU that it does better? Like, if it's like, just for example, uh, creating a triangle on screen and how fast it can draw that triangle that's great but if it doesn't even have lighting or textures uh, that may not be so meaningful for a gamer and you see why I'm going with these performance targets they're kind of always very interesting to me I'm hearing that it's a rasterized scene a full rasterized game that's what the performance target was for three times but apparently AMD could not hit that so Currently, anyway, it's around 2.8, 2.7. And this is definitely higher than Lovelace, although Lovelace is certainly no slouch. And, yeah, I mean, my concern, honestly, for these cards isn't really the performance targets. It's, 
It's just that I think they're going to be really expensive. So I am very interested to see what the uh, prices of these products are. Narve 33, for example, there's already like a lot of discussion from Grayman, Copa 27 Kimmy, and a couple of others. I forgot one person who was really talking about this, so I apologize for not crediting them in the video. And you know, they, they were saying that they were actually kind of nervous about the price of Narve 33. And again, the performance target of 33 is around apparently 1.5 times Narve 21. So it's going to be very interesting what AMD decides to price that at, because if it's 50% faster, even if they do launch end of next year, for example, that's still an awful lot of computing power. I'll be very curious to see how the top end uh, Lovelace products and eventually Hopper when it's launched, let alone something like, I don't know, the 7950 XT or whatever it ends up being called is priced. And given we're gonna be seeing some very interesting innovations from AMD, I also wonder how much RAM we're gonna see on these cards, especially AMD who generally try to RAM in, <laughs> you get it? I'm sorry. And you're trying to throw in as much RAM as possible. I'll be curious to see whether we see 16 or 32 gigabytes. And finally, one other thing, because I've had so many DMs about this, and yeah, 3DFX are back, or are they? This one's very confusing. Um, basically, 3DFX allegedly now are back. In fact, graphically challenged, I'll link uh, the tweet in the video description, was actually talking, I believe it was him anyway, to the official account, and they say that they now have a license and they can do this. But if you recall, back in the day, 3DFX essentially got bought lock, stock, and barrel with NVIDIA, and it's quite a complicated story with how like IPs are working, and I don't really want to go super in-depth into this story in this video, simply because I don't really think it's worth it unless we really know what's happening with an official announcement apparently happening, well, in just a few days, on Thursday. And allegedly, we're going to see them unveil some type of graphics products. Now, personally, this means that there's several possibilities, in my personal opinion. And I'm gonna run through what they are. The most obvious one is it's a troll, and on Thursday, ha, 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 we got, you know, the internet excited. That's certainly a possibility, right? The second is that it's going to be an AIB brand. And, you know, they would purchase <laughs> chips, ironically, from NVIDIA or AMD or maybe Intel in the future. And then, obviously, they would sell it just like MSI or Zotac or whomever. Not really that complicated story. The other possibility is that it is new graphics chips. The problem is with that is that developing a graphics chip you know, with a good IP now is not easy. I mean, look, Intel are kind of going through these pains themselves. And not only that, you've got to worry about fab capacity and memory and just God knows what else. So that's certainly a way, to, uh, sorry, something to keep in mind. The other possibility, and this one could be quite interesting for retro gamers, is that maybe we're going to see these products available for, well, basically like Voodoo 1 or Voodoo 2 back in the day. So they would be targeting retro gamers. And that honestly would be kind of cool. I I have to say that I'm kind of leaning more towards a troll at the moment. But yeah, I mean, the, the fifth possibility, and I, I, I'm kind of skeptical about this to be honest, is that it's an NVIDIA account. Uh, but I don't think that is true because of the messaging of, you know, the, the, what we're seeing from them. But one of my thoughts was maybe this was some kind of NVIDIA ploy and it's going to be like, Voodoo is going to be the new, you know, titan for gaming, but I'm highly skeptical of that. So personally, I think that if it's a legit product, it's probably going to be AIB or retro focused. But, you know, I would love another competitor in the marketplace. That would be spiffy. That would be amazing. Um, obviously, it's one of the reasons I'm so vocal of my support for Intel graphics, because I feel that we need more competition. And while I think the bleeding edge is always exciting, you know, 3080 Ti or 6900 XT or whatever, they're awesome cards, but... I do want more competition in the low to mid range. And I think that, you know, there are a lot of uh, costs that are associated at the moment with uh, uh, graphics cards, like a higher um, 
prices for, for example, GDDR6 memory. And I'll probably talk about that more in another video. But yeah, even so, some of the prices we're seeing from cards at the moment is kind of ridiculous. And just more competition anyway, like even outside of pricing is never a bad thing. And I think that it does help to drive and push innovation. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on that one with 3D effects. We'll see. I'm trying not to get super hopeful because, yeah, I don't want to be sad, basically. So I'm, I'm probably, in my mind, I'm calling it a troll because I just don't want to get like all invested and then it just ends up being like nothing, which would kind of suck. Hey, if it is a real product, maybe it'll actually have 32-bit color support. Zing! I actually owned a Voodoo 3 back in the day. My Voodoo 3 was a really nice card. It had the 2000, I think it's like 143 megahertz stonks. And I got to like one, 190, something like that. No, one, one, 191. I remember being really upset it wouldn't go to 190, 193. I don't know why I mentioned that. With that said, thanks very much for watching the video. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.